These are a few materials that we'll be using for this tutorial, including an extruder, red, white, and green polymer clays, and a True 22 from the Steel Magnolia. We're going to start off by rolling out a long slab of the white polymer clay and placing it on the cup. You'll then trim the top, the bottom, and the sides so that the sides are straight with the tumbler. Repeat again with another slab of clay, placing it right up against the previous one so that it creates a seamless pattern covering half of the tumbler. Again, trim the top, the side, and the bottom, and then continue to blend the seam where both of the slabs meet. You don't have to worry too much about um, getting fingerprints at this part because we will be adding texture to it in a little bit. Once you've gotten that blended, you'll just take a craft knife and trim the bottom at an angle and smooth it out. Same with the top, you'll go ahead and just trim a little bit off the top at an angle. Is where you'll take a sanding block and proceed to press it into the clay all around. Once you've achieved your desired pretty texture, you'll go ahead and apply some cocoa colored acrylic paint onto your clay, making sure to keep the coat very light so that you can maintain all the texture. Once you've covered the entire slab, you'll just go ahead and scrunch up a paper towel and dab it all over that fresh paint. Once you've completed that, you'll go ahead and roll out another large slab of clay and this is what we'll be using for our frosting. So I split it down the middle and then continue to trace out the frosting drips with a uh, pointed sculpting tool prior to cutting it out with a blade. make sure it fits and then go ahead and take a silicone sculpting tool and blend in any harsh edges that you might have.
Now take the other uncut slab of polymer clay, place the cut frosting drip on it, and trace out the drip with the same pointed sculpting tool. smooth it out and set aside. You'll then apply some tan colored acrylic over the slab and with the same paper towel technique just dab it all over the clay. Now you'll place one half of your frosting aligned with the center of the slab of clay and trim off the excess hanging on the side. Repeat for the other half. Now you'll smooth the top part of the frosting up over the slab and kind of over the rim of the tumbler as well. Trim off all that excess at an angle. Now use your blade to cut a small sliver of clay at the top of the tumbler. This is to ensure that the epoxy has a definite hold on the tumbler and that everything is sealed in. After smoothing, we'll roll out one more slab of clay and cut out the door for the gingerbread house. Place it on the tumbler aligned with the center point where the frosting drips meet. You'll then use a pointed tool to score lines throughout the door, some going from top to bottom, some going halfway, some little bits, just kind of scatter them throughout. This will create a wood grain texture. You'll then paint your door with a chocolate colored acrylic paint. Once that's entirely painted, you'll go ahead and roll out all of your polymer clay. You can do this using an extruder or by hand, though an extruder is much more efficient. Here you'll roll out thinner strands of the red and white polymer clay as well as some thick strands of green and white polymer clay.
I decided to manually roll these out just a little bit more to make them a bit longer and thinner. Once you've gotten them rolled out, you'll just join them at the top and start spinning them together. After it's entirely spun together, just trim off the ends and roll out the entire piece to flatten the ridges. Split it in two and then you'll continue to place a strand on each side of the gingerbread house. At this point, you now have a blank gingerbread house, and you can go ahead and get as creative as you'd like with the decorations, and here's how I did mine. In the same fashion as the green and white stripes, you'll roll together a red strand and a white strand of clay, spin them together, and roll them out to flatten the ridges. Split it in two and then continue to roll out a much thinner piece of white clay. Split that in two, smooth out the ends, and then cross them in a T pattern. You'll then fill the tops of the candy cane and arrange them in a heart shape over the tea. Trim off the excess of the tea underneath the heart and then transfer it over to the tumbler. You'll then roll out a few more strands of the white polymer clay and proceed to cut them at a half inch intervals. You'll then brush on a mixture of half dark brown paint and half water, making sure to brush off any excess since we'll only want this to fill in the crevices of that wood grain texture.
While that dries, you'll shape the small strands of polymer clay into little U's and apply them all around the door of the gingerbread house. Roll out another strand of red clay and then place it all around the outside of the door and trim off the excess. Now for some more twisted strands of red and white to create some candy canes for either side of the door. Paint a tiny ball of polymer clay with black paint and then go ahead once it's dry and apply it to the door. Roll out one last strand of green polymer clay, split it in two, and then spin those two strands together. Form those strands into a circular shape and check it against the door for the size to see if you need to trim off any excess to make it smaller. Roll out a very thin, small piece of bread clay and create a double loop to make a bow for your wreath.
roll out one last strand of white foamer clay and cut it into two equal pieces. Smooth out the ends of each piece and then form them into S's and place them on either side of the top of the door. And here you have your completed gingerbread house ready to be baked and epoxied. You can find me in the 3D Tumblr Lounge on Facebook for more tutorials. I hope you love this and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas.